Senator Emerson, thank you so much. We're going to uh, bring in right now Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz of Florida. She sits on the Judiciary Committee and on appropriations, so we ultimately want to talk to her about Sonia Sotomayor. But before that, uh, Congressman Wasserman Schultz, I wanted to ask you about the president's trip to the Middle East. Sure. Are you optimistic uh, that something tangible will come out of this, or in your mind, are we still very much at the beginning of a... Uh, or somewhere in the middle of a long process? Oh, I, I think that we're on the path of, of a long process. And the significant event that you referred to earlier that, that people may be waiting for is the speech itself. I mean, this is a very significant overture that, that President Obama is making to the Muslim world that is following on a number of other overtures that he's made, particularly uh, during the spring, during the holidays, the, the Muslim holidays. And the, the fact that he has gone to the, the, the the Middle East uh, is uh, is making the speech in uh, in Egypt is a significant event by itself, and you know the, uh, Al Qaeda you know can you know try to gum up the works and focus on the most extreme elements of the Muslim world to try to make sure that he can short so they can short circuit this progress, but. I, I think that uh, the appeal is to the moderates in the Muslim world, which we believe and, and, and certainly hope are the vast majority of Muslims in, uh, in the entire world. Congresswoman, uh, when the president met with Israeli leaders, he insisted that Israel needs to do more to keep the promises it's already made in terms of peace in the Middle East. It needs to be a more productive, cooperative partner to its Arab um, uh, neighbors. He told Thomas Friedman in an interview that he thinks that a lot of these Arab nations and countries overall in the Middle East need to stop saying one thing in private and saying something else in public. But that being said, is it a snub now to Israel that it's not included on this overall Middle East trip? No, it's not a snub at all. In fact, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to participate in a meeting with Prime Minister Net Net Netanyahu when he was here with all of the Jewish members that serve in the Congress. and. Prime Minister Netanyahu underscored how pleased he was with President Obama's commitment to the state of Israel, that they had the, the same goals, they were on the same page, and that we were going to move forward together with Israel to try to jumpstart the peace that, process. And do you think that Israel is going to be more cooperative, in the, in, especially on this issue of Jewish settlements? Well, I think one of the important things that we need to make sure happens is that there be broader uh, recognition uh, of, of other Arab nations. I mean, b before the peace process can, uh, can move forward in a, in a significant way, Arab nations beyond the two that already recognize Israel need to make a commitment to recognize Israel's right to exist. That's, that's one of the incredibly important components of the peace process. Congressman Wasserman Schultz, uh, you're from South Florida like I yes. am, uh, where there's a, a strong Jewish population. And I know last year during the 2008 election, among some of your constituency, there was a questions about Barack Obama and how he would relate to Israel and his approach to the Middle East. What are you hearing from constituents? Uh, forget the pundits and the uh, professionals. What are constituents telling you about the president's trip and how he's approaching the Middle Eastern situation? Well, ultimately, President Obama got 78 percent of the Jewish vote across this country, so he actually bested some of the uh, the, the best out outcome in the Jewish community uh, voting population. I've, I've heard overwhelmingly positive feedback from the Jewish community in South Florida and across the country. They understand that President Obama is a strong and solid supporter of Israel, will continue the tradition and history of the relationship between our two countries, and is committed, unlike the previous administration, to making sure that we can be engaged in helping move the peace process forward. Congresswoman, I want to turn your attention, I know you sit on the Judiciary Committee yes. in the House, I want to turn to Sonia Sotomayor. What do you make of her nom nomination, and what do you make of Newt Gingrich seeming to... Uh, at first call her a racist <laughs> yeah, and then kind of take a back. step back and say maybe he was wrong uh, to do that. I, I think the Republicans are, are faced in, in this country with uh, a nomination that is really unassailable and they don't really know what to do with themselves. They're hurling insults and accusations. Uh, I mean, you have a nominee who has the most judicial experience of any nominee in a hundred years. You have someone who is a Yale and the Harvard, uh, uh, Yale and Princeton graduate, someone who has impeccable legal credentials, a you know, strong background in the private sector uh, in, in legal experience. So uh, it's not surprising that when you have that type of a candidate that really they might be making desperate accusations because they don't have anything substantive to be able to accuse her of. 
Hey, Congressman, we have to go, but I just want to ask you really quickly. Republicans sometimes are frustrated that some of their nominees for the Supreme Court, like Souter, like John Paul Stevens, have turned out not to be as conservative as they hope. Do, do you or any other Democrats have any concern at all that Sonia Sotomayor may not be what you're hoping she'll be? I have every confidence that Sonia Sotomayor is the most qualified person that President Obama could have chosen for a seat on the Supreme Court. So, Congresswoman, um, it's great to have you with us thank today. You very thank much. you so Good much. Good to see you.